Good morning, Hank. It's Wednesday. I have an unusually short period of time in which to shoot and edit this video today, so this one's going to be built for speed, not built for comfort. So, Hank, it turns out that the hotel at MIT, the hotel I was staying at in Boston, is even more awesome and nerdfighterly than even I knew about. For starters, a lot of the light fixtures look like circuit boards. Also, in the lobby, they have a bunch of robots on display from MIT's Artificial Intelligence Lab. Not to mention the fact that the hotel itself is located at the corners of Sydney and Green. Hank! It's mom! And of course, like any awesome hotel, there's a reading room. So I'm sitting in the reading room and I'm just like, uh, reading. And then I leave the reading room to go meet M.T. Anderson. And on my way out, I happen to notice what the reading room is called. Hank, it's the Norbert Wiener Room! Hank, I don't want to get all fangirly on you, but I am a huge Norbert Wiener fan! He is my favorite child prodigy of all time, and they named the reading room at the hotel at MIT after him! Yes! Nerd fighters! Hank, it might seem like I'm getting a little bit too excited about the whole Norbert Wiener thing, but you have to understand, I really like Norbert Wiener. Hank, I originally became aware of the existence of Norbert Wiener when I was researching my second book, An Abundance of Catherines, shameless plug, and aside from having what is unquestionably the greatest nerd fighter name of all time, it turns out that Norbert Wiener is also made of awesome in many other respects. Hank, the thing about child prodigies is that as impressive as they are intellectually as children, they often don't continue that intellectual growth into adulthood, and in fact, many famous child prodigies end up becoming really miserable, solipsistic adults. In fact, when Norbert Wiener was a kid, he was in college at Harvard, and he was at Harvard at the same time as another famous child prodigy named William James Sittis. William James Sittis was even smarter than Norbert Wiener, and everyone was like, man, William James Sittis is gonna be like the most important intellectual figure in the whole history of the United States. I mean, Hank, when the guy was 13, he was lecturing in astrophysics at Harvard. But then when William James Sittis became an adult, he stopped being interested in astrophysics, and he started being really really, really interested in railroad traffic signals. And then William James Sittis went on to spend like 30 years writing this like 8,000 page manuscript that's everything you ever needed to know about railroad traffic signals all the while working as a bookkeeper. And then he died alone. Anyway, Norbert Wiener was totally headed for the William James Sittis fate, except Norbert Wiener, like, rose up out of the ashes of his childhood genius and actually managed to become an adult genius. He invented the field of cybernetics, and he's this, like, hugely important applied mathematician, and I just love him. John Green is to Norbert Wiener as Chris Crocker is to Britney Spears. I mean, seriously, Hank, if Norbert Wiener were to rise from the dead and perform at the MTV Video Awards and everyone made fun of his performance because he was socially awkward and everything, I would totally cry! One other really cool thing about Norbert Wiener, he looked a lot like Colonel Sanders. Speaking of genius, Hank, thanks for sneaking us into the They Might Be Giants concert. They were, as always, awesome. Also, your video yesterday reminded me of all those months when you were in high school when you always spoke with a fake British accent and you kind of acted like it was your real regular accent. Hank, I'll see you tomorrow. P.S. A quick memo to nerdfighters in or around Richmond, Virginia. If the good lord's willing and the creek don't rise, I'll see you tomorrow at 7 p.m. at the University of Richmond where I'll be speaking.